Well, Molly, how are you, Molly? So what I'm doing right here is I'm putting the finishing touches on my rainwater gravity fed off grid wood fired shower, hot shower. <laughs> That's a lot to take in. So what's going on inside of here is there's a ball valve down in here, okay? And I use this tool that I got from the big box store which you can make your own. If I had a welder, I'd probably just make my own. And if I had a welder, I'd actually make this wider Okay, to handle the ball valve, so stay tuned. I'll probably get something rigged up for that. So I stuffed this down in here. I grabbed the handle of the ball valve, and I went to turn it on, and it actually snapped the handle of the ball valve off. Okay? I'm going to see if I can get you in there. All right, I went and got a flashlight for you. See? I'm going the extra mile. So you can see right there that ball valve is missing half a handle there. See that? Which actually works to my favor. The reason why that works in my favor is because this is a, I think this is a six inch, yeah, six inch pipe, okay? And really, to be honest, the ball valve just barely fit in there a little bit, okay? So what happened was too, is this dirt shifted this pipe a little bit over, and that made the uh, handle probably snag the wall of the pipe a little bit, and that probably helped bust it off as well. But now that it's gone, I can get a full sweep motion inside of the six inch pipe, no problem, okay? Now the other um, ball valve over here, uh, we have two. One's the main cutoff for the cabin, and then this will be the main cutoff for this building here. Um, but the other ball valve worked fine. So I'm gonna dig this out. I'm gonna move this over just a little bit, you know, this way. So that way, when I put the tool down in there, I can grab that other handle and move it freely. Because the way it's operating right now, we're only getting about three quarters of the way open. We're not getting it fully open, okay? And we want the maximum water flow so we can have a nice shower, okay? And I'm gonna get this done real quick. Don't go anywhere, because I'm gonna take you guys inside. I'm gonna show you how it comes into the building. I'm gonna give you guys some tips on some gravity-fed systems, because it's not like your normal plumbing Okay, it's actually completely opposite. I'll show you guys how I ran everything up to there and then uh, we'll see if that hot water's warmed up yet by the time we're finished here. So, let me get going here. I got the pipe moved over. I got the flashlight in there so you can see. <laughs> All right, 
Now, I don't know, can you see that? Let me see if I can get you closer. All right, so there's the ball valve right there. In that position right there, that is the closed position, okay? I'll get my tool on here, and we'll get that thing turned. Stay close to the base. You don't want to snap it off again, do you? And now we're fully open. That means I'll get 100% water pressure now, which is what you need. You're dealing with gravity fed situations, okay? You wanna have the, all the water going through there. You don't wanna have any choke offs or any problems with that. Another thing I didn't mention was, man, we're coming off some rain and all that stuff, and it's pretty wet over here. So when I dug this out the first time, to get into here a little deeper than what you guys saw in this video this morning, about wore me out. <laughs> So now that we got that fixed, I have a control box. I have another one floating around. I'm gonna put on that one there. So what I'll do is I'll put this control box on here. And then when I do my landscaping, uh, this will be sitting here. Uh, the ground will be right here. The rock will be right here, our pathway and all that. So you'll just have this and then you'll just open this up. Just open this up to get access into the ball valve. It's these gloves, you know. I'm just using them because I'm shoveling a lot. My hands are getting tore up from the floor up. And then once we get this uh, pipe straightened up and I'll get the dirt back in here, I'll put this control panel on top of it, this control box here. So that way it'll be easy to get to. We'll know right where it is every time. And now that I move this pipe over, we won't have any more problems with the locking up. So you can get these anywhere. And you want these control panels because you'll want main shutoffs to your house if you're running gravity fed or whatever kind of water. You always want to be able to shut it off before it gets to the house in case you have a problem with the plumbing inside the house. Shut it off out here, fix your plumbing, turn it back on here. Also with gravity fed, um, this is the lowest point of the system. So if I ever had to drain out the whole system for any reason, I'd be able to turn on this uh, ball valve down here and then all the water would come out inside, okay? because that's the lowest point in the system is right here, okay? Right here. And actually at the house over there, um, I covered it up now, but when we didn't have extra lines and stuff, I actually had a flush out right there that I could just turn on and let all the water uh, seep out. All right, now is the fun part, is covering all this back up. to warm up out here a little bit. I don't like the gloves no more neither. Ha! Let's get rid of it all. Here comes the sun. Yeah, see, you know how the sun's coming because the roosters are crowing. <laughs> uh, that's kind of funny if you ever know about roosters. And we've had people come up here and the roosters are crowing in the afternoon and they can't figure it out. They're like, I thought roosters only crowed in the morning. Ha! is going to be kind of on grade 
You know, you don't want it kind of sticking up too high because then you'll start tripping over it all the time. You want to kind of land just flush in there. And we're going to put rock over here. So I want to have it just so the rock might be just around it or right on top of it. And we'll see that green lid. So. Working in mud makes everything harder, makes you more tired, makes your muscles hurt more. Ha! So right now I'm just trying to make sure the top's kind of level. You don't want to be walking and then clip your toe on it or anything, right? And we have access to the panel right there. Turn it on, turn it off. The caps work fine, you know what I mean? It's personal preference and these are a bear to get off if you guys use these caps alone uh, they'll suck onto the pipe the mud will get around the pipe and it'll be hard to get off I got it off you can do it but it'll be more trouble okay you get something like this it's designed for access so it's just a lot simpler right maybe all right, I like it. covered in we're inside the building this is what we're calling our learning center or our powerhouse um, whatever we basically have designed this building on top of our root cellar and we tapped into our gravity fed rainwater that we live off here off grid hundred percent that's how we live hundred percent off rainwater no public utilities and we actually just now hooked up some solar power um, so if you guys like are interested in solar power, stick around because I'm going over our system and it's like the dummy proof plug and play um, solar power system. I wanted to run it for a while first before we actually talk to it uh, about it to you guys. Okay, because I wanted to make sure everything was working proper and that it was all legit. And uh, we've been running it. It's running a freezer, refrigerator, lights, computers, pumps, whatever we plug into it. Okay, so pretty soon we'll give you a whole rundown on that. Because I know this stuff's important to you, especially in these times, okay? Individual freedoms, sustainability, and self-reliance are kicking into high gear right now. Now that is the hot water heater right there. That will heat up the water to a great temperature. And we have found uh, using it, I've been using it for a little bit now. Um, once you heat up the water, just sitting in that tank will actually stay hot for well over 24 hours the severity of the temperature decreases obviously over time but man it really stays good and hot okay um, and if you want to just get it up a little bit hotter you could just toss in a little bit of extra wood so i'm going to check the inside right now see how my fire's doing and it's just kind of smoldering that's kind of what you want uh it doesn't really have to be some you know big flaming fire inside there so obviously when I open the door up, the flame kicks up a little bit, but you know, you don't have to have a bunch of, uh, you know, fire in there. Just a little bit of sticks going like that and you'll get all the heat you need. Also, when you get the fire going, just to keep the smoldering going, you just kind of let this as your air vent. This controls the airflow, which will control how much fire you have. So after a while, you can just let that down and just kind of let that smolder.
So you can choke it totally off and stop it, or you can leave it up like this and it'll pull a little bit of air. And if you really want to, you know, like at first, when I first start getting my fire going, I'll leave this door open, make sure the wood's catching and everything. And then once I've got the fire going, I'll, uh, I'll close her off. Okay, so now I'm gonna take you guys downstairs and we're gonna start at the beginning when it comes into the building and then how I have it all the way up to the tank. We're going down in the root cellar. And this is my inlet right here, okay? That's two inch PVC, okay? I plumbed it into the ICF when we did the foundation. And so my gravity fed water comes through here, elbows up, starts climbing up the wall, and then it goes up to there, okay? Now I'm gonna take you back upstairs and I'm gonna show you how all that breaks out. And then this is my trap for the shower. It has a vent, which I have yet to hook up a pipe there, so all you plumber armchair quarterbacks, just take, take it easy, don't worry. We're gonna get her done, okay? And then that's my outlet pipe for my gray water. That is my pump over there, my sub pump inside my root cellar. Pumps into this and this, and this all goes outside, you know, just waters the grass, okay? Now I'll go upstairs and I'll give you a big secret on gravity fed water. two inches all the way up okay all the way up and then what I did is I hit three three quarter inch PEX pipe okay that's PEX pipe hot and cold right there okay this is the cold water coming in from the rainwater it goes into the cold water valve for the shower okay then over here is the cold water in that goes to the hot water tank goes to the bottom of the hot water tank okay because hot air hot water just like hot air rises so the hot water comes out of the top and then it goes down into a T and then there's the valve for into the shower I've got to put this wall on I left it open so I could show you guys and then over here what I did was I set up a hot and cold spigot see so I put a hot water and a cold water spigot there for Stacy so so she can do her laundry on the back deck in the winter time in the summertime we'll have rainwater catchment back there and she'll be able to do her laundry off of the rainwater that we catch in the summer all right now this here is the bathroom okay got a little cute mirror there <laughs> oh if you guys saw me on instagram and i posted that the other day everybody liked the mirror all right so here's the problem with gravity fed water systems with a gravity fed water system you have to make your own plumbing okay you can't go to the big box stores and just pick up a nice faucet because you won't have enough pressure to push it through there if you live in america because america has politicians that are smarter than everybody else and they're so wanting to save the water that they messed up all of our plumbing over here and don't get me started on gas cans either <laughs> So we had to fashion our own shower setup, okay? So we took some copper pipe and uh, basically just soldered it together. It's been working like a dream so far. I'm gonna turn it on and show you guys how much pressure we have, um, you know, coming out of the shower right off, okay? Here we go. Looks like I gotta tighten that down a little bit there. I missed that, no biggie. All right, so that's the hot water side. All right, we'll just open them up full bore right now, just so you can see, okay? Pretty good, isn't it? Coming down good. Now you wanna know, is it hot? That's what you wanna know. I don't know. Now I have the cold water left. Now it's warming up, warming up, warming up. Warming up, warming up, now it's hot. And it'll get hotter. I remember I just started it up when I went out to dig. So that really isn't too bad. Oh, why did I shut the curtain? <laughs> all right, look at that. Made it all myself. Well, oh look, you just, look at that. You see that? That's that shower steam. 
So I did all that with the help of Gary, my buddy Gary. And he hates doing plumbing. Ha! Ah. Thanks, Gary. He helped me solder the pipes together. We just kind of hung out one day and threw that together. So there you have it. That right there is our hot water, off-grid, rainwater, 100%, gravity-fed, wood-fired. What was the rest of it? It's pretty long, but that's it, and it works. It works like a dream, okay? So now we have a hot water shower, and you can have one, too. I'm trying to uh, work uh, on something to get these tanks for you guys, so stay tuned. Right now, they don't really, they just have them available just like, you know, because I know them. You know because it's kind of a thing you know you just say hey i like that tank you got and i'd like to get one and they'll make you one but they can't handle like a lot of order so i've been talking with those guys and i'm waiting on some responses from them and if i can do it i'll have these uh tanks offered for you guys for you off gridders out there okay so if you got any questions um leave them down below and you just have to remember that when you guys are doing these gravity fed systems off grid okay you got to have the big pipe, right? All the way to the last second. So I took that two inch pipe all the way up to the last second. If I would have stopped down in the basement and brought the three quarter inch pipe up, and then the three quarter inch pipe would have had to go through that hot water tank, and then it would have to come out. You see what I mean? I lose all that force, okay? So I brought that two inch pipe all the way up, pushes that water through that three quarter inch opening and I still maintain a lot of pressure through the line okay and if you guys try to get plumbers to help you out on off-grid stuff it's going to rack their brain because it's opposite of everything they've ever learned and knew about plumbing all right now the other reason why my gravity fed shower system works so good is because of my situation with my tanks okay the head of the shower the, the where the water comes out Okay, it's the exact same height as the bottom of my rainwater catchment tanks all the way up there in the barn. Okay, here let me show you something. See that window right there? That's our log cabin. Right inside that window is our counter for our kitchen and that's where our water comes out. So that white band right there is basically the sink line where the water comes out. All right, so I had to make sure that my shower was that same height or a little bit lower so I can get maximum pressure. And that's what I did. So in order to get maximum pressure from your rainwater collection gravity fed system, okay, you have to have the supply level at the bottom of the supply so you get all that pressure. Okay, at the bottom of the supply, you put your shower, your spigot, your faucet, whatever you want. You, anytime you start going up, okay, this is the bottom of your tanks. Anytime you, this is pretty generic how I'm doing this, but I'm just trying to explain it to you. This is the bottom of your tank. The more you go up and put your spigot, the less water pressure you're going to get. Because as soon as the water levels with your spigot, you will get nothing. Okay, you will get nothing. Okay, this is rainwater catchment, gravity fed, 101, all for free, right here on Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. You get nothing. Okay, so you have to keep your spigot below or at the grade of the bottom of your tanks for gravity fed systems. So there's all your tips. There's all the systems in and updated. Now we have a beautiful new bathroom. Uh, Stacy's going to come on here in a little bit. We're going to talk about... You know, maybe we'll do a live show tomorrow. Leave a comment down below. If you guys want to see a live show on Friday, we'll come on here and we'll talk about what it's like uh, not having a running hot shower or shower period in winter time and, and how we're enjoying it and some of the struggles we went through on taking showers, you know, for like the last 10 years. I mean, let that sink in for a second. We've lived off grid on this property for a decade, okay? And this is the first time that we've had a running hot shower on our property, okay? So let that sink in. And we're huge proponents for cold showers too. So we take cold showers too, and we won't use maximum hot water to take our showers. It just helps take that bite out, especially in the wintertime. And uh, also when we're washing clothes and 
doing a few other things. Now we also, in our log cabin, we have a wood cook stove and it has a reservoir in it that actually heats the hot water. Okay, so you can, you know, there's that too. We've had hot water, we just haven't had running hot water. So in order for us to take showers in the past with hot water, we would heat up a bucket of water, uh, put it in one gallon jugs, put it in five gallon buckets, stand under it, take showers, pour it on each other, uh, take showers. And then also if I was at a friend's house, um, I would take a shower down there in the city and uh, you know, just whenever we could, if it rained, not in the winter time, but if it rained, I'd catch a shower with some soap outside, you know, that good old fashioned stuff. So lots of ways to uh, work out your shower off grid, but this system right here is the bee's knees. Hit the subscribe button. We're building my mom a log cabin in the woods from scratch. I mean, we're starting right now. We're four videos in. So if you haven't seen those backtrack a little bit, check those out. Um, my mom will not be having off-grid systems at her place. We talked about it and it's just too much of a change for her. I mean, already she's moving at an older age and so that's kind of throwing a monkey wrench on her. And she's also nervous about off-grid systems and she doesn't think it's gonna work good for her. So to alleviate any extra aggravation, uh, we'll be hooking her on to public utilities, uh, but you know, we're not getting on them. And we're also gonna put systems in place for her place, even though she's gonna be on grid, so that if the grid fails her, she'll not be left high and dry. So stay tuned, make sure you hit that subscribe button. A lot of cool videos, we always have cool videos. We have a thousand videos up about living off grid from when we started way back four years ago or something. So you can see the general progression of our off grid life all the way up until now. And I'll tell you what, it's been quite a journey. So you might wanna check those videos out and get some of that free knowledge, okay? Knowledge is power. I might even go take a hot shower. So we'll see you guys on the next video. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, like I said, leave a comment down below if we guys want to do a live show and maybe Stacy can hang out and we'll all hang out tomorrow and uh, talk about the shower and some of the stuff going on around here. All right. <coughs> Have a good day.